Hello, you're talking to the homeboy, Lil Spank Boo. You have a prepaid call. You will not be charged for the... Thank you for using Global Tail Link. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, Lil Spank. Yes, sir. So, we was just talking about the, the, the gravitating towards the negative and positive um, qualities right. of the urban uh, environments in which we live. Uh you care to keep elaborating on that? Right. So let me ask you this. Let me ask you this, bro. Okay, so did that have any type of influence on you becoming from Emerald Hills? And re and reason why I ask that uh, um, is when I was coming up, Emerald Hills to me was the image of success. I went to one of y'all picnics right. in 1993, homeboy, and in the front of the picnic, of the park, um, and the, which, the direction I came in meant nothing but low riders. I remember this low rider homie was sitting on threes, gold yeah. Dayton's homie. Uh, um, it was a, a drop top, and it was the most beautiful car that I had ever seen man, at the time, man. You know what I'm saying? And, oh, yeah. and you know, little you things know, like that. The whole mystique, you know, that's really part of the whole mystique of the town. It's the finest cars, the finest clothes, and the finest ladies. You dig know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's always what I always saw represented with my elders like T.P. and Big Bow and, and, you know, brothers like that. You know, they was always about getting their bread, bro, and, you know, having the little toys that come along with getting bread, you know? Did that influence you in any type of way, shape, form, or fashion in, in becoming from Emerald Hills? Well, I'm not going to say that because that knowledge came about afterwards. Because you got to remember, I'm living on the Ave in National City. I'm not living in the set to where I didn't grew up with these brothers every single day and was able to see them grow into this person that I know now. Now, these are intricate details that come along with being a member of which I wasn't at the time. You feel me? Mm -hmm. So, so okay. I didn't have that. My primary, my primary influence was, like I said, uh, uh, rest in peace, my nigga little Bob Reese. You know what I'm saying? But, and it even go back deeper than that, Nas, because back when they used to have the Martin Luther King parade, homie, I used to be, I used to do the little dance called the prep. Nigga, I was the only nigga in the Dago Girls up under the OG homegirl. Shout out to the OG homegirl, Dago Dale. My Emerald Hill go way back, and should I say my frolicking in the Emerald Hills community go way back to the Dago Dale days. Mm -hmm. When the homegirl Taranda was telling you that was in this call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. Who was instrumental in me getting my name, Lil Spank Booty? They was all a part of that. So we used to do the prep and break dance and all that type of shit. And I used to be yeah, the only dude in they little group. I was young as a motherfucker too. All these homegirls are probably now at least a little bit older than fifty. You know what I'm saying? Probably fifty two, fifty three, something like that. You feel me? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so I was young, like eight, nine years old, and they was probably twelve, thirteen, something like that. You feel me? Yeah, for sure. That that's so when the, that's I, when I, the I dance goes down back then, and that's where she lived at in Emerald Hills, and she introduced me to Maurice at first. Maurice Holmes, the big homie, L.O. Rest in peace, love, Oliver. Mm. So I was around Emerald Hills before I even knew of the gang element or anything. You know what I'm saying? Mm. And then, like I say. Even with playing Pop Warner football, I mean, one of my best friends, the homie Jamal Burris, lived right on 56 in Roswell. I used to be spending the night in his house. Mm. You feel me? Yes, sir. So, there was a lot of different elements that played a part into it, but my main real sweet mitten of it was with Reese right there on Mental Man, homie. You know what I'm saying? And the relationship that was cultivated between me and I from those times that eventually, yeah, you know, this is where it's at right here. You feel me? Right, right. And it built in the, it built in the bigger things. I got you. Exactly. <laughs> I got yeah. you, man. Uh, so, yeah. okay, so the Lil Spank, last one, the last interview, you told us how you got the name Lil Spank. Let, let me ask you this. Uh, did you always, because you, cause before that you were saying you was uh, uh, one of the bops, right? Yeah, I was calling myself Betty Bop, yeah. Did you always, like, was you, did you, do you have an older sibling, older brothers or anything like that? No, I don't. I'm the only child. 
So but I so, have a little stepsister. I got a stepsister and a stepbrother in Vallejo with Pop Stone. Okay. The day. Oh, okay. I got you. So, like, you was, uh, is it fair to say you kind of, like, was looking for a big brother? Well, I don't know if I was looking for it per se, or if these were just the elements around me that I kind of gravitated towards as, 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 you know, shit. Having, I guess, that older big brother figure, you feel me? Yeah. Subconsciously, maybe, you know? Yeah, yeah. Like, I, I know I did, bro. That's why I asked. Um... Uh, early in the game, I was trying to be named after, uh, I don't know if you know Lil Boo Boo, uh, Dan Jones. I'm sure you probably ran across him sometime in Juvenile Hall or something. But uh, I used to be right behind him, homie. You know what I'm saying? Whatever name he was, he he had 20,000 names on me. And I was trying to be whatever he was, a little. You know what I'm saying? He was Dirty Dan. I was Lil Dirty Dan. He was Lil Sandman. I was Baby Sandman. He was D-Mob. I was Lil D-Mob. And then he turned the name to Boo right. Boo Boo, and I was Baby Boo Boo. You know what I'm saying? And then you know, eventually I had to go ahead and cut it off. But uh, but right. yeah, that's why I, that's why I asked you that, bro. You know, because I, cause I right. me personally, me personally, this is another thing I want to add to that. Me personally, I feel like when you have a big homie, a big homie is a big brother. A big, uh, it's like the Big Brother program. I don't know if you ever heard of that. But it's like the big homie, it's yeah. like the big brother program to where they, they, they slide you to ism. You know what I'm saying? They they put you up on game because they're ahead of you. They're ahead of you. Meaning that they see stuff before you get there. You know what I'm saying? To where they can kind of like drop that wisdom and knowledge down to you so that you don't fall in the same pitfalls as them. You can go around them. You know what I'm saying? And little Absolutely. things like that. And, and, and like I was telling one of my homeboys, that's something my neighborhood lacked. They don't do that no more. You know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, predominantly, right. people are I just... Think all of us are suffering from that. Yeah, and that's, but that's a big thing. It, I think it's a huge yeah. thing, bro, because you're not getting no gain. You're just running around like a whole, chicken with your head cut off. The connection to the whole operation, if you ask me, is very essential. You know, that's the nexus to the whole operation because if you look at it in terms of what the gangs were created for, which would be in the vanguard and the protectors of the community, those older elements of the gang culture were essentially those surrogate fathers that were absent in our home, that we didn't have to give direction and teach us how to fight and be able to survive in our environment. So these brothers were essentially that front line and assisting us with those things that prevented, uh, you know, uh, other uh, so-called uh, uh, Straight, straight wolves from being victimized because they didn't have the pack with them to teach them the way to survive. You did what I'm saying? Yes. The father is an essential part of that pack. And I think in its best manifestation, and this is what we're getting back to, in its best manifestation, the forefront of that now in the absence of that father is those older elements in the community because we see the preachers doing it. They represent their post as older elements for those who need that spiritual guidance. they there. They're available. It's just us, homie, in a lot more ways than just the military aspect. Don't get me wrong, because every every body of people need a, a security mechanism. Some people use motherfucking ring cameras and, and, and pit bulls for their security. Other people arm themselves. There's other people that band together up under a certain banner, and they vow to be that particular security for this particular neighborhood, a group of people, et cetera, et cetera. So what I'm saying is I'm not going to never say that the military aspect of our community, which we know now in Skyline is the Pyrus, down in Skyline Drive is the Pharaohs, and so forth and so on, Lincoln's Emeralds, uh, Brims, et cetera, et cetera. That is essentially the military wing of the group community but for one reason or another we've only spotlighted that military uh, aspect in the representation of the community those other aspects are alienated so now when we get back to the original core of what these embodiments of community protection and representation were structured for we definitely have a responsibility as older brothers to be that buffer that the father who may be absent for the home for whatever reason still be able to pick up that slack because I remember it was top water football coaches my boxing coach uh, cricket bag coach racers you know I've been on that nigga cricket before the gang shit rap shit all that I've been on him long as Mitch but it was predicated on his possibly the boxing Coach. These were all older brother figures that were representative in the community. They just wasn't spotlighted with that. And they wasn't necessarily from the gang background. 
mm-hmm. but it also became a, 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 a essential within even that gang background. I mean, who we really learned shit from at a certain point in our life, but the older homies, even in big relationships too, in the long run became corrupted, and then we band together with our age group. Because again, it's a different level of bastardization. The older homies sometimes, like the fathers that are around, be talking some shit that we ain't on. Mm-hmm. So rather than try to uh, be dominated, it's a... This call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. It's another state of rebellion, too, mm-hmm. the young homies. That's why I think I'd be so uh, magnetized and drawn to the younger homies. Because I really understand and are in tune and haven't lost a lot of those different mannerisms that they still got and haven't elevated from. I haven't severed my ties with that lack of maturity and experience to the point where I still can't identify with it and therefore have a bridge to be able to connect with that youngster where he nine times out of ten really fuck with a lot of cats that's my age. Mm-hmm. Because they separated, they fell so far from that, now they can't even relate. Mm-hmm. Now the young nigga like blood, fuck blood, I'm not fucking with blood, blood ain't fucking with that. This nigga always talking about this, you see what I'm saying? But again, being that we have these bridges now, I still like to fuck with my little homies. I don't interact with them as much as I would like to, but right now that's not my priority and my focus. My priority and focus is trying to bring these folks to clean time so I can get up out of here and in the mean and in between time to try to do my community building in mass A and not just for individuals in particular. But at the same time, utilizing these platforms to always espouse the fact that my little homies, blood, I'm always available. Nigga can tap in, it's good. If you, you know, if you're looking for some positivity or just, you know, to separate the chicken shit from the chicken salad, you always got an opportunity. And the nigga's not far away, bro. You know what I mean? So, mm-hmm. you know, that's what I mean. You know, I'm, you know, I think that's very essential, bro. The big brother figures, or, or nowadays, uh, politically correct term is mentors and all this type of stuff. I mean, homie, that's an essential part of building the community. Mm-hmm. And that's absolutely on our shoulders as sworn adherence to be mm-hmm. the vanguard of the community. Yes. I, man, yeah. I agree to that 100%, bro. Like you say, that's, that's, that's the origins of our creation, is to be pillars of the community, vanguards. To Absolutely. uplift, to assist, and, and try to make sure that, uh, leave it better than when we found it, you know? Absolutely. Absolutely. And you know, this brings me to another thing, and, 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 and bear with me because I'm going to try to speak in a fashion that doesn't expose too much, you know, so bear with me. So I remember the last time we was having a discussion and we was mentioning about the different organizations and documents and things like that that are available in the penitentiary for those who decide that that's something that they aspire to do. So long story short, we're speaking on my circumstances in particular. Homie, do you know that there's always, regardless of me being Lil Stank with you all that, there's always a segment of our community as Don Move that don't fuck with me or feel as though I'm this authentic because of that. Just like there's individuals on that side of the fence who might trip off, damn, well, how he still cool with the Don Moe brothers and this, that, and the third. So it's like, it, you know, it's a trip, homie. But my whole point, and I'm, I'm getting to, to what I was, what I, what I, what the gist of what I was saying was, what kind of cat would I be if I just turn my back on some cats I consider my brother since I knew what it was to consider a nigga who ain't your mama's son your brother. Do that make sense? Mm-hmm. Just because my mind frame and my mentality has elevated to a point where now I understand my fight, my struggle, my purpose and willingness to sacrifice whatever dynamic that sacrifice might be isn't just limited to my blood homies only. Now this is something that includes all black people Mamas, aunties, the babies, bloods, cribs. But also, you have 60 seconds remaining. Why do I gotta stop fucking with y'all? If anything, now y'all become my responsibility to give the same message of understanding. But guess what? It's bigger than just us. Now we gotta think about the grandmas and the children and, 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 and really having a financial, uh, stable, financially stable machine for a, a, a community, bro. Mm-hmm. When it comes to planting food and not just thinking about, okay, level, well, if we go over here and exercise a military maneuver, these could be the drawbacks. 
and all we think about is just the homies who be out here on the block and we, we the first line of defense. But now when we start strategizing and thinking about moves and how it's going to ripple and have an effect on the community from the top to the bottom, now we're elevating our mind frame. Now we're becoming a real organized entity, bro, and not just a loose mob that bands together in time to benefit but doesn't really stand for nothing. Like Machiavelli say, a group without organization is a work Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Little Spank Booty, y'all, tapping in with us, hollering at us, you know, um, setting it straight. We talking politics. We talking love. We talking community. We talking organization. We talking the whole nine, man. Stay tuned. Check out the other clip that we're going to have because he's calling right back in.